This video footage, which was recorded in Venezuela just a few days ago, shows a woman buying a kilogram of guavas, a fruit commonly found throughout much of Latin America, from a street-side vendor. In her hands, she holds a stack of Venezuelan currency, 20, 50,000 Bolivar banknotes to be precise, making 1 million Bolivars in total. Believe it or not, that's how much this kilogram of guava she is buying will cost her. One million Bolivars. And if that sounds crazy, just listen to this. These Bolivars are Venezuela's third currency since 2007. The currency currently in use is known as the Bolivar Soberano, or Sovereign Bolivar. These replace the Bolivar Fuerte, or Strong Bolivar, at a rate of 100,000 to 1 in August 2018. So these six guavas are essentially priced at 100 billion Strong Bolivars. The Strong Bolivar was introduced in 2007 to replace Venezuela's original Bolivar, which was just called the Bolivar. And that replacement took place at a rate of 1,000 to 1. So believe it or not, in pre-2008 currency, a kilo of guava fruit currently costs 100 trillion Bolivars. And how much is 100 trillion pre-2008 Bolivars worth? Using the current U.S. dollar exchange rate from the day I am recording this video, about 58 U.S. cents, just over half a dollar. But by the time you watch this video, it will likely be worth less. Probably much less. Inflation has long been a problem in Venezuela, but its currency has been disappearing into a hyperinflationary black hole since late 2016. Besides introducing new versions of the Bolivar, the Venezuelan government has imposed price controls, foreign exchange controls, and pretty much every other type of control it can think of. Nothing has worked. In 2017, President Nicolas Maduro even introduced another new currency. Not another Bolivar. This was a cryptocurrency called the Petro. Supposedly, it was backed by barrels of oil from Venezuela's vast natural oil reserves. Venezuela has a lot of oil, so yeah, maybe. Cryptocurrencies can sometimes be kind of confusing, but the Petro is especially confusing because, well, because it really doesn't make any sense. In fact, it makes so little sense that major cryptocurrency rating agencies have labeled it as a scam. But scam or not, the Petro remains an official currency in Venezuela, and the Venezuelan people are forced to use it on an infrequent but regular basis. They also have to juggle two other currencies every day, the increasingly worthless Bolivar and, unofficially of course, the US dollar. All in all, it's a complete mess. Hi, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and welcome to another edition of Strange Money. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, let me know in the comments. And if you do want to see more videos like this one, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and be sure to click the bell so you get notified as soon as the next one appears. By the way, this channel recently passed the 150 subscriber mark, which is fantastic. So thanks to everyone watching this who has subscribed so far. It really does mean a lot. In this video, I talk a lot about inflation, which is when money is able to buy less and less stuff over time. I explain this concept in more detail in another Strange Money video about Argentina's hyperinflation in the 1980s. So check that out if you want an explainer. Hyperinflation, by the way, is when money loses its value so quickly that normal daily life becomes practically impossible. That's coming up too. So here are the three things I'm going to try and explain in this video. Exactly what the Petro cryptocurrency is. Well, I'm going to try. What's happened to Venezuela's normal currency, the Bolivar. And for you banknote enthusiasts out there, yes, we will look at some banknotes. And lastly, what life is like for normal Venezuelans trying to navigate this monetary chaos. As I mentioned in the opening, the Petro was launched in 2017 to much fanfare by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. At the launch event, it was announced that Petros would be backed by Venezuela's vast oil reserves at one barrel of oil per Petro. At the time, oil was trading at about $60 per barrel, and Venezuela does have a lot of oil, so in some respects this sounded like a pretty cool idea. But the Petro wasn't being backed by just any old oil. According to Maduro, the oil which would be backing the Petro came from an oil field near the small central Venezuelan town of Ateperire, which Maduro claims has over 5 billion barrels of it waiting to be pumped out of the ground. 
And this is weird. When currencies are backed by something, which hasn't really been a thing for much of the last 50 years or so, it tends to be precious metals. The idea is that people with silver or gold-backed currency can cash it in for a certain amount of silver or gold whenever they want. And since silver or gold is generally considered to be valuable, knowing that money can be traded in for a set rate at any time ensures that it remains valuable. But it seems unlikely that anyone would want to cash in their petros for barrels of oil. Gold is really heavy, but most people, if they needed to, can carry a few thousand dollars worth of it in their pockets. Practically nobody, at least nobody I know, can carry around a few thousand dollars worth of crude oil. That would be something like 50 barrels. And then what would you do with 50 barrels of crude oil once you had it? Where would you keep it? And also, the oil from Ataperire is still in the ground, so there's no easy way, as far as I can tell, for anyone to get it. When reporters from Reuters visited Ataperire in 2018, they found only old, abandoned equipment and not much of that. To start producing the oil, which supposedly backs the Petro, the Ataperire oil field reportedly needs about $20 billion of investment. So right away, the Petro doesn't really make much sense. And there were also some technical issues. It was originally announced that the Petro would be built using a technology which supports another well-known cryptocurrency called Ethereum. Then, without explanation and very late in the day, it was announced it would be built using another platform called NEM. The details here aren't that important. What matters is that the Petro quickly lost all credibility in the global cryptocurrency community. And even if the Petro did make sense, it would still be a pretty odd duck as far as cryptocurrencies go. Cryptocurrencies are meant to be a new type of monetary system, which doesn't need a central government-run bank to administer it. And yet, here was a government trying to launch a cryptocurrency for its own use. That's really not how it's supposed to work. Many observers speculated that Maduro's real motive for creating the Petro was to evade U.S. government sanctions. These were making it extremely difficult for anyone to do business with Venezuela's state-owned oil company, PDVSA. Most international oil sales are conducted in U.S. dollars and involve banks which comply with American law. Since oil is by far Venezuela's most important export and a vital source of much-needed hard currency, this is a huge problem. But the American government cannot stop Venezuela from selling oil using cryptocurrencies, since these don't involve banks. So maybe, if the Petro worked, U.S. economic sanctions could be evaded. Except no. The Petro has not worked. It's not even at all clear if the Venezuelan government has even really tried to make it work. President Maduro claims to have raised billions of dollars from the launch of the Petro, but no one really believes that. And there is no sign on international cryptocurrency markets that anyone is regularly buying or selling Petros, actually not even buying or selling them at all, let alone trading barrels of oil with them. For the most part, the Petro has simply been ignored and forgotten by the worldwide cryptocurrency community. But while the Petro has flopped on the international markets, the Maduro regime has begun trying really hard to force Venezuelans to use Petros as part of their daily lives. This hasn't worked very well either. When President Maduro launched the Sovereign Bolivar, Venezuela's latest normal currency, in August of 2018, he claimed it would be an improvement because it was backed by the Petro. You see, with 3,600 Sovereign Bolivars, anyone could buy one Petro and vice versa. The hope was, as far as I can tell, by pegging these two currencies together, it might somehow put the brakes on inflation. Except, as I explained before, no one was trading the Petro at this point, which makes it pretty much impossible to say how much a Petro is really worth. Sure, in theory, the Petro is backed by a barrel of oil, but that's, at absolute best, just a theory. The reason Maduro was introducing the Sovereign Bolivar in the first place was the previous currency, the Strong Bolivar, was in a hyperinflationary freefall. In February 2016, the Strong Bolivar had been officially valued at 10 to the dollar. By November 2016, the official exchange rate had slipped to 248,521 to the dollar. The unofficial exchange rate, the one which more accurately expressed the Strong Bolivar's real value, was sitting at a whopping 6,670,079 strong bolivars to the dollar. So the sovereign bolivar, supposedly backed by the Petro, which was in turn supposedly backed by a barrel of oil worth about $60, was presented as a way to curb inflation. Except it didn't. Within a few days of the sovereign bolivar's launch, 
annual inflation had climbed over 65,000%. When inflation reaches that kind of level, paper currency pretty much becomes worthless. So worthless that enterprising Venezuelans began using banknotes to make bags and wallets rather than spend them in shops. Bolivars are just worth much more as arts and crafts material now than as actual money. Speaking of banknotes, you might expect that the Venezuelan government has been printing some pretty high denominations to keep pace with the plummeting value of its currency. And you'd be wrong. The government hasn't produced a new banknote since these three were released in January 2019, over a year ago now. The 50,000 Bolivar note, the one used to buy those guavas, is the highest value banknote in circulation and is currently worth just over one US cent. It may be worth less than a cent by the time this video is uploaded, and by the time you're watching this, well, who knows? So, at first glance, these banknotes do look pretty cool. The portrait format is all the rage among banknote designers these days. And speaking of portraits, all three feature the namesake of the currency, Simon Bolivar, who is known in Venezuela as El Liberador, or the Liberator. For banknotes which were nearly worthless by the time they were printed, they do feature a fair number of security features, including security strips which line up when you hold them up to the light, a watermark of Mr. Bolivar, plus UV-sensitive fibers, both red and blue ones. But take a closer look and these banknotes do look a bit like they were done on the cheap. They're all identical other than the color and the denomination, which clearly must have saved on the design cost. And the reverse sides of these notes are decidedly underwhelming. At first, I wasn't sure if this was anything at all, just some sort of geometrical design or maybe a printer's smudge. But no, this is the mausoleum of the Liberator, which was built in 2012 as a resting place for the mortal remains of Simon Bolivar at a cost of over $120 million. This was back when the Venezuelan government still had money, you see. This building has been compared to a giant skateboard ramp, and yeah, I can see that. Overall, I guess these most recent banknotes are not too bad, but really they are mere shadows of the earlier Bolivar banknotes, which were actually pretty spectacular, like this 100 Bolivar note from the original Sovereign Bolivar series, which has lots of amazing colors and a spider monkey on the back. Cool, huh? So compared to the previous designs, these January 2019 Bolivar banknotes definitely look like cost-cutting exercises, and perhaps more telling, no higher denomination banknotes have been produced since then, despite the desperate need for them. The government may simply lack the money to produce more money. I know, ironic, huh? And in fact, it's not just the lack of higher value notes which is a problem for average Venezuelans. There is a lack of cash itself, so much so that to get cash, as in banknotes, you need to buy them from a dealer. Dealers mark up the cost of the cash by 50 to 100% of the face value and you pay for it using a bank transfer app on your phone. And if that sounds weird, that's just one of many huge inconveniences which Venezuelans are facing every day. So let's get into this. The hassles of everyday life in Venezuela caused by its crazy currencies. Before I start, I should explain that this information comes from a friend in Venezuela who has done his best to try and explain this all to me. It's pretty complicated, so to keep this video from being an hour long, I'm sticking just to the highlights. But I think there's enough here for you to get a good idea of the obstacles everyone is grappling with. First of all, there are three types of currency in use. Petros, sovereign bolivars, and US dollars. Venezuelans generally avoid using petros unless the government forces them to, but it does occasionally force them to in two different ways. The first is that, starting last summer, government offices began asking for payments in petros. So if you want to pay your taxes or get a passport, you're supposed to get out your Petro app and make a transaction. Although in reality, I'm told people often pay whatever the equivalent amount in sovereign bolivars is. The government has also been making annual payments of half a Petro each to pensioners and government employees every December, a practice which started in 2018. In theory, this is meant to kickstart the use of Petros by the general public, but in reality, it creates a stampede for everyone to buy something with their half Petro as fast as they can. These half Petro payments are distributed via Venezuela's Carne de Patria, which is a sort of combined government ID and social security debit card. But most stores are not equipped to accept payments using Carnes de Patria. This meant that when the first Petro payments came through, there was hardly anywhere to spend them. 
The stores that did accept Petros immediately developed incredibly long lines of customers trying to buy basic essentials. That is, until these stores stopped accepting Petros as well. Petro payments can also be made using the official Petro app, but this isn't much of an improvement. To get a Petro app account takes about three months, and according to my friend, only one store, a popular Venezuelan department store called Traki, has ever accepted Petro app payments. But Traki stopped accepting them too after the December 19 Petro payments, so this makes the Petro app pretty useless for anything other than paying your taxes. Hooray! This past December, a few shops began accepting Petros from Carnes to Patria again, but only at a rate of between 8 million and 11 million bolivars to the Petro. This is only about 10% of what the government claims that Petros are worth. So the half Petro annual payment received by pensioners, which in theory is worth half of a $60 barrel of oil, is in reality worth about $3. That is, if you can find a way to spend it. Buying things with normal cash is hardly any easier. Bolivar banknotes have become almost as hard to use as Petros. Other than buses and fruit stalls, most places just don't want them and are set up to accept payments electronically instead. For the few places which still require cash, only the 50,000 Bolivar banknote is still accepted. So the 10,000 and 20,000 notes, which were only released a year ago, plus all the sovereign Bolivar notes which came before, are now essentially worthless. You can get 50,000 Bolivar banknotes from banks, but the current daily withdrawal limit is 200,000 Bolivars, which is currently worth about 11 cents, or one and a half guavas. So with cash so problematic, Electronic payment has become the norm, either in dollars or bolivars. This footage here shows a shop with prices listed in bolivars, but according to my Venezuelan friend, most prices are now expressed in dollars. Of course, customers tend to only have sovereign bolivars to spend, so to buy something, you need to first find out what exchange rate the shop is using, so you can then figure out how much you need to pay. The example my friend gave is that he recently bought a kilogram of cornmeal, which was priced at $1.10. He then had to find out what rate the store used. Most stores use a rate posted daily on an Instagram account called Monitor Dollar, but they sometimes use rates from another source called Dollar Today, the official government rate, or they might simply make one up of their own. In the shop where my friend bought his cornmeal, they used the Dollar Monitor rate, which was on that day 1,652,717 bolivars to the dollar. That meant his kilo of cornmeal cost 1 million 817,988 bolivars, which is all pretty exhausting. I mean, can you imagine having to look up an exchange rate on Instagram and then having to multiply a bunch of huge numbers together just to know how much something really basic is going to cost? Of course, people lucky enough to have dollars, either in cash or electronic form, have a much easier time. These are accepted pretty much everywhere, and you don't have to worry about them losing their value before you have a chance to spend them. There are a lot of reasons for Venezuela's dreadful economy. I don't think there's any doubt that the government now led by President Nicolas Maduro and previously led by President Hugo Chavez is largely responsible for this mess. But the economic sanctions imposed by the United States are almost certainly making things much worse. These sanctions date back to the Obama administration but grew much more intense under President Trump, who hoped they might pressure Maduro to resign. This hasn't worked, of course. And meanwhile the ordinary people of Venezuela continue to suffer every day. So if you live somewhere where you only need to keep track of one type of currency and where you can go to bed at night and be pretty confident the banknotes in your wallet will still be worth something in the morning, be thankful. We take these things for granted, but the people of Venezuela certainly do not and put up with more chaos and uncertainty than I think most of us can even imagine. Thanks for watching. Did you know about the Petro? Or that buying anything at all in Venezuela was so complicated at the moment? Let me know in the comments. And please be sure to like and share this video so more people can see it. And subscribe so you can see more Strange Money videos in future. Who knows, this channel may hit 200 subscribers soon. You want to be one of them, right? See you in the next video.